Okay, we're continuing on the subject of how healing can come to us. We saw that healing can come through worship. Uh, healing can come by request. Someone requesting healing from God. Healing can come by a touch. Healing can come because uh, someone took you to a place where you could be healed, even though you didn't understand about it. They were able to take you there, and you were willing to go. And so that's faith in God, trusting God for your healing. Then we saw healing uh, during that period of time. There also was for a friend. So you can take a friend, you know, and help them to receive their healing. The next thing I want to talk about is healing for a child. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 and 19, here Jesus is speaking. It says, While he spoke these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him. Notice this attitude of worship, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Now, move over to verse 23. It said, And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrel, uh, people playing music and so forth, you know, and sometimes they played music for joy, and sometimes they played it, uh, a certain kind of music for people that had sickness or died. And so there was the minstrels and the people making a noise. And verse 24, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, showing their disrespect for God. The people around there were being very disrespectful. Now verse 25, But when the people... Uh, were put forth. In other words, Jesus took those people and put them out of the room because they would hinder someone from receiving their healing. So he put them out of the room, and then he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. Notice again, Jesus is touching her and taking her by the hand, and she arose. And verse 26 says, and the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. Well, here uh, we see there's a distraction involved. But yet, Jesus handled that distraction. I remember that when we were in uh, church in back in Oklahoma, uh, <laughs> there were some people that would come to church just to create disturbances and try to disturb the service. So the pastor uh, instructed the usher, said, Now, uh, we know there's certain people that do this. Don't allow them to come and be like right in the middle of the crowd or right on the front. You know, put them in the back. <laughs> so it's easy to remove them if they start to bring a distraction. And so the pastor there, he, you know, he is very smart about how to handle things. And he said, uh, well, all of a sudden, this person was making a distraction. So, because he so learned the music, he just said, well, I want to sing a song. So he just brought the people into singing a little chorus, you know. And while they're singing that little chorus, the ushers are removing this distraction out of the church. And then he goes on with the service, and of course, People were able to receive the word, receive their healing, receive whatever they needed. Uh, there's been times when I've gone in the hospital and the family would be around the person and saying very negative things. And so sometimes I would wait for a while to allow the family to leave, or sometimes I would ask the family to leave, say, and I'd ask them to go into the other room. So anyway, whenever the family would leave, then I would be able to uh, minister to the person that needed to receive healing. And each time, I would see the person healed. But you can't have that if you have these distractions. Amen.